How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs, and today I want to show you five different issues that I have in this home that I recently purchased that are against electrical code, and you might also have in your home, or maybe possibly a home you're looking to purchase. Now, I have seen some of these issues many other times in the past, but just so happens this home has all five of them, so it makes for a great learning tool that we can go over, so you can get some examples of what you want to look out for. And then we'll end on this thing behind me, which is the electrical panel that is just about a foot off the floor, which is kind of interesting. So let's jump into the first of the five issues. So I'm at a light fixture, kind of a chandelier in a living space. And this actually has number one and number two on our list. Number one, you never want to see your Romex wire coming in, making connection with a fixture that isn't contained within an electrical box. So there should be a junction box or electrical box here in the ceiling, and also one that can hold weight, especially if it's in a living space, because somebody might put a fan on that. That has been a mistake that I have made in the past as well. So Issue number one is you do not want to see the wire coming directly through, making connections that are not held within an electrical box. If you want to check on your own home or if you're looking to purchase a home and you just want to make sure, you can look also on the exterior lights. That's one of the most common places I've seen where they take a shortcut and just take the wire straight out and they don't contain that within a electrical box. And before we move on to number two, since the market, the real estate market is so hot right now, I see a lot of people that were, are buying properties as is because they wanna make their offer stand out as much as possible. I completely understand that, but no, if you're buying a home and you're just buying it as is, you're taking a lot of that responsibility on yourself. So if you're doing that, these are some things you wanna check into because you can do some simple checks like this and really know if, if the past owners or past electricians on the project were taking shortcuts where it might cause issues or a full house rewire for you in the future. So with that said, number two, you can probably see it already, and that is we have electrical tape here, which is basically covering up the wire connection between the light fixture and the Roma. Now that might've been okay back in the day of knob and tube where you're covering splices up with electrical tape when it first came on the market. But nowadays you would definitely want to at least see a wire nut or possibly you have a push-in connector, like an ideal push-in connector or my favorite is the Wago 221 lever nut. All of those would be okay and all of those would actually meet code. This does not. Now, number three would come up on pretty much any home inspection and that's because we're in the kitchen here. We have a box with two receptacles and they're not GFCI. Now you might see a few of these receptacles in your kitchen and that could be okay. And that's only if they are in series with the GFCI where the GFCI would be the first in the series and then it's passing on to a standard receptacle. Now that would still be protected, but in this case, we do not. These are all standards and there's no GFCI outlets next to the sink. This also is gonna be valid for your bathrooms. Now, kitchen and bathrooms are not the only location you should have GFCI. It's probably worth a quick Google search of NEC code GFCI locations, and you'll see it's really more in terms of a water source. So within six feet of a water source, you should have protection with a GFCI, whether that's a receptacle or it's a series where the first one is protecting that or actually a GFCI breaker. So just something to look into because that also is gonna cover your crawl spacements, your basement, exterior outlets, and a few others. Now moving on to number four, which is right here. When I walk around the house, I see a lot of two-prong outlets, but then I see some three-prong outlets that are kind of sprinkled in. So that always makes me question, are those three-prong actually grounded? Do they have a ground wire going to that, or did they just connect up the hot and neutral side, and now they have an ungrounded three-prong, which can be dangerous and definitely against code. That is the case with this one here. So if you look closely, you can see the sheathing on the outside of the Romex. It's actually braided, indicating it's a much older style of Romex. And you see there is no bare copper wire going to the ground 
terminal on the three prong receptacle. So this is actually an ungrounded three prong. This is against code and something you don't want in your home and needs to be corrected. Now I do have a video link right here, which goes over how to swap a two prong outlet out with a three prong, but it is a GFCI three prong outlet which just does meet 2017 NEC code and should be okay for your area, but you do wanna investigate before going down that path. Now let's finish it off with number five. So number five and the last one before we go into the bonus, which is that panel location. And that is number five, where you have a electrical box like this fixed to the outside of the wall. It is not within said wall cavity or within the ceiling. It's actually just on the outside of the wall and you have Romex that is ran external to the wall as well. And it just goes down and into the floor cavity and then down up into the electrical panel. That's a big no. -no. So when this was added, it should have been routed through that crawl space up through this wall cavity, a hole cut in, an old work electrical box put in, the Romex coming through that electrical box, and that's how you add a new outlet if needed. You do not do it such as this. Additionally, I'm not even pointing out that I have some plumbing up there that's been dripping, it seems like for years, by all the mineral deposits that's been dripping directly on the electrical box. So for this one, big no-no, number five, if you're going to add an outlet, if you're going to add additional functionality to your home's electrical system, take your time and do it right. But let me know your feedback. If you're a pro, you have experience, you've seen a lot of these deficiencies, what else are you guys seeing commonly that people need to look out for? Let me know, I'll take those comments and I'll pin a comment down below this video where I'll add any other common issues that come up. So if you're learning from this type of thing, you can see that pinned comment, see what else people are adding without reviewing hundreds and hundreds of comments. So let's talk about the electrical panel. All right, so we talked about the five issues that you're gonna to wanna to look out for, but this is a bonus, and this is the location of this electrical panel. Now, I can't think of a good reason to locate an electrical panel this low, uh, about one foot off the floor. If you guys know of a reason, let me know, because I'm, I'm really not coming up with one. With that said, the code as I know it, and again, always willing to have your feedback, especially from the pros that are, that are listening, you need a working envelope around your panel. So the code actually calls out, you need 30 inches, which doesn't necessarily have to be exactly centered, but you need 30 inches, 36 inches from the front face, and then you need headroom height, the height of 78 inches. So that's your working envelope. So technically, how low this panel is, is not against code, at least code as I know it. But again, I am just a DIYer, right? So I just have an interpretation of what I've read through. I am not licensed. But what it would come into is I have the dryer outlet right here. So most likely the dryer was being plugged in, completely blocking the panel, completely intruding on the working space. So then that would be, against code where it's just not gonna be accessible. So I don't know why they located here, but technically the dryer positioning within the working space is the thing actually against code, not necessarily how low this is on the wall. Now, other things to note, if you're new to electrical, this is a 100 amp service. I always prefer 200 amp service. And I do have a few spaces there are homes that I come across that have a 100 amp service and everything is full. So you have no additional capacity to add a circuit. So if you wanna add an outlet or you wanna add some lighting, whatever that is, your capacity is all full. So you always wanna find some spaces and at least I prefer a 200 amp service. So that's it. Let me know your guys' comments and if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, jump down there, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to get notified as we have multiple videos coming out per week to help you with repairs and improvements around the house. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.